yourself king be yourself be yourself queen be yourself be yourself king be yourself be yourself queen be yourself what's up what's up what's up y'all welcome back to the ymc and me podcast thank you for tuning back in I'm your girl, Santa Dean, hopping on the mic, excited to be back with another episode. Yeah, and it's your man, Dr. Corbin. I'm here. So what we got today, Santi? This episode, we got a special guest. I'm a little biased. Our special guest today is going to be a youth speaker. At YMC, we center our work on youth power, so this episode will feature a youth expert. And here we don't define expert by your age, but rather your experience. And this speaker is a great person to showcase that. So this episode features an interview with a youth leader, an advocate, an all-around just superstar. Her name is Jalisa Aguilar Galdemez, who is a freshman at Duke University a recipient of the Outstanding Youth Leaders of the Year $20,000 scholarship, an advocate for mental health, especially among the Latinx community, and so much more. Yes, so I'll tell you something about this young lady. When I first met her, you know, she was quiet, real, you know, poised, but you could tell that she was sharp, that she had chill, as my grandfather used to tell me. Uh, She... She knows when and when not to. And when you are in the youth mentoring space and you see an individual like that, uh, you really, it brings a sense of like, like, yeah, like the torch is really being passed on because that's the overall goal, right? For any, any mentor, you want to, you want to keep keep it going so it was just a breath of fresh air look at you breath of fresh air you're not deep (laughs) well i definitely agree so without further ado i hope you all enjoy the interview and let's get into it thank you julissa for taking the time out of your day today to meet with us really excited to hear the feedback that you're going to give and gems as i like to say that you're going to be dropping on our audience members Um, And of course, before we get started, just tell us a little bit about your background and what inspired you to get involved in mentoring. Yeah, so just more formally introduce myself. My name is Jaleesa. I'm a current freshman at Duke University. Um, I'm a proud QuestBridge scholar. And um, yeah, a little bit about my background. I'm low income first generation student and um, I grew up in Durham, was born and raised here, so um, I del- I've always been in the um, Durham public school system, and um, I think that's what mainly um, inspired my role in working with mentoring is that I saw um, kind of how underfunded the uh, school system was, and I knew that um, there needed to be some support within that system, so um, yeah, that kind of is what set me on my path. And then amongst that, like, I just had amazing mentors myself, and I knew that it was something that I was always interested in doing. So um, I started a small little mentoring um, club at my school, in high school. And um, ever since, it's kind of just been a journey with Youth Mentoring Collaborative and, yeah, going going with the flow. <laughs> Julissa, what mentoring organizations are you a part of And how have these organizations impacted your life? Yeah, so um, I'll start with, I'll kind of go like in chronological order of the organizations I've been a part of. But first was definitely um, the Emily K Center. I was part of their Scholars to College program. And although it's not explicitly for mentoring, I did find a mentor out of that program. So um yeah, that was kind of like the first men, um, mentorship program I was a part of. Um, my mentor is absolutely amazing, and she is honestly like the reason I was able to find my voice and like feel more confident in taking up space and you know the places that I'm in and then the situations I get in. So um, yeah, and then. 
from there in high school, I started my own mentoring organization called the Buddy System, and it was just within my high school, but it paired upperclassmen with lowerclassmen so that the upperclassmen could give advice, tutoring, kind of just help them navigate the whole dual enrolled system because I went to early college high school. So that was just a different aspect of mentorship for me because I was um, more on the administrative like in charge side which is not what something that I was used to but it did help me get um, a view and kind of like shape the ideals I have now as a mentor and it helped me get practice with that and I have two mentees out of that who I'm helping apply to Duke right now actually so um, that's very, it's very fun for me to, you know, um, kind of be still in contact with them, even though I graduated. And the system, that organization, the club is still running at my high school. So I'm really happy that they're still, that they like took it and they're still um, implementing it because I think it is a big help for underclassmen, especially if um, they were anything like me, like completely clueless about high school and college and all of that. And then finally, and importantly, most importantly, um, Youth Mentoring Collaborative. Um, I first started working with Youth Mentoring Collaborative for Summer Social Justice Academy. And honestly, after the academy, I, it kind of like changed the trajectory of how I thought of mentoring in the way that I felt more confident in being in a mentor and mentee role. So, um, yeah, after that, I continued doing work with Youth Mentoring Collaborative, at a part of different committees. And then I also met Santi, who I consider a near and dear mentor to me right now. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of like the work that I've done. Just recently, we did um, Summer Social Justice Academy again, and I was a youth mentor or a youth coach for that, a youth advisor. And, um, yeah, I'm still in contact with some of, some of the participants who have been interested in Duke or interested in QuestBridge, and it's exciting to see them, um, to see how confident they are to reach out to me and ask me questions after that. So, yeah, a little bit. So, yeah, and you're really leading the conversation. I mean, you've already talked about your leadership experience and, um, I'm not sure if you've already mentioned uh, this part of it, but just from me knowing you over the past couple of years um, and like your passions, um, we wanted to ask you a couple of questions about um, your perspective on the LGBTQ plus and gender identity community and how that shows up with you working with youth and in, in the mentoring space. So first question being, how can mentoring programs create a safe and inclusive environment for LGBTQ plus youth? Yeah, so this is a topic that's very important to me because um, I do identify within the LGBTQ plus community. I identify as lesbian and I have had um, past experiences of curiosity with gender identity as well when it comes to being non-binary or gender fluid. But um, yeah, so... Mainly, I think, honestly, just having that space is enough. Um, I I knew that growing up, I didn't ever have the space to truly express how I felt or to be curious. And I think that is what um, kind of like um, made me not want to explore that part of myself. And it kind of it negatively impacted me because I felt like I had no one or felt like no one understood me. So I always held that part of my identity back, and it wasn't until I think like the end of middle school when I first started getting involved with Emily K that I started feeling more confident because I started meeting people who validated that identity. So I think just being in the space where that identity is validated and where it's like, yes, this does exist, like this is a thing, like it's okay to be this way as well. Like I think that's something that's really important. So. Um, in that mentoring relationship, just acknowledging that different identities exist and acknowledging that it is okay to explore and express yourself in ways that are not heteronormative um, is important. And honestly, like growing up, if I would have um, encountered that type of space before, I would have had a lot less negativity um, to face around my queer identity. But, um, yeah, just opening that space and ha and being educated is one of the biggest things. 
Um, I, I think as a mentor, I'm constantly, constantly, constantly trying to keep up on different um, things happening worldwide, culturally, like regardless of what, like with pop culture, everything, because it all has to do with how you should treat your relationship with your mentee. And I think it's the same thing with ever evolving gender identities and, you know, the sexual spectrum, like it's all a big thing that it's important to stay educated on or ask questions on if you're confused. So just having that space open and um, being ready to make a space if it's not already um, available. All right. You have what you're like you you're like crushing these questions. Did you do this interview before? Oh. <laughs> um, because you're like you're like leading a pack on it. So with that being said, what advice would you give mentees who are exploring their gender identity? Well, I remember most about when I was exploring my identity was just not letting go of like the, the little um like voice in my head that was saying like no this is wrong like you you know like it's not worth exploring but the biggest thing is just let go of that voice and let yourself truly be curious and explore whatever it is you're feeling because at the end of the day exploring means nothing but validating who you are if you explore and you end up knowing like hey like I actually don't you know align with being non-binary I don't feel like I'm gender fluid then that's fine because now you know and you know there's no harm done but if you do explore then now you have confirmation like hey I feel like I am you know gender fluid I don't you know align with necessarily being a woman or being a man so how do I go from here to um, validate my own identity and find people that can help me in exploring what it means to be genderqueer, non-binary, whatever it is. So honestly, just letting yourself um, be open to exploring is one of the biggest things and knowing that it's not wrong to explore and it's not wrong to um, identify a certain way. That was the biggest thing for me. But also just once you do feel certain or once you do feel curious, find someone who supports you. The biggest help that I had was my support system, my friends who were right along with me, validating me and, you know, my mentor who was constantly reassuring me that everything was going to be okay. Like that support system is what truly helped me. So just find your people and know that there are people out there who are willing to support you regardless of how you identify. Awesome. Wow. I was reflecting on another question that we had about identities and I'm just curious about, I guess, well, no, I think you already addressed that. Corbin edited this out too, because I changed <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so Jaleesa, wow. I mean, you're really just knocking them out of the park and mm -hmm. just to like your experience, lived experience, I think oftentimes can have more impact than yeah. the people that's sitting in a room with credentials behind their name, right? Like that's not what we're here for at YMC. We really want to focus on youth power and you're just a perfect example of that. And this is why youth deserve to be at the table. Mm. So now we're going to go into our Review Your Heal segment where we ask our guest speakers about their experiences with mental health and giving advice related to our questions centered on mental health. And so the first question being, how do you address mental health challenges in mentoring and your personal life? Yeah, so mental health is always something I think that's tricky for everyone who's going through a mental health crisis or going through something um, that they need help with. And I think the first thing for me is always recognizing um, that it's okay to need help and that it's okay to not be okay. So whenever I'm going through something personally, I have I always have to step back and reflect. And my biggest way of reflecting is journaling or writing in some way. So I love writing poetry. I love doing daily journals just so that I can track and see where I'm at mentally in a day so that I know what I can take on. And I think that's one of the biggest things that helps me also avoid um, certain like mental crises, I guess, is just like knowing that I'm not at the capacity to handle something. So my biggest thing would just be like for personal, it would be journaling. When it comes to mentorship relationships, 
there's a reason they're your mentor. They're there to help you with certain things. So I think just um, addressing in the beginning of the mentorship relationship, addressing certain things that can come up, certain topics that are okay to talk about when it comes to both the mentee and the mentor. I know some people have like um, their sensitive issues that may be harder to address, but just like addressing those boundaries in the beginning so that once you do go through something, your mentor is already like aware and knows that this is something that is prevalent in your life and something that they may need to help you with. So um, I know my mentor, she, um, I've told her a lot about how I have struggled with anxiety throughout the years, especially when it comes to um, social situations. So whenever, like, I tell her, like, hey, like, I'm about to go into a big crowd or I'm about to do some public speaking thing or a presentation, she knows exactly what it is, like, I need to hear, which is just, like, words of affirmation. Sometimes it's just I need someone there to listen to me vent about how nervous I am. So, yeah, just... um Knowing that your mentor is there to support you is a big thing. And for mentees, knowing and being and recognizing that your mentor is also a human being. So, you know, just give them the grace of, um, you know, taking a second if they need it while answering questions. But, um, yeah, those are like my biggest things. I'm always like the biggest advocate for just like some form of creative expression, whether it's like art, poetry, reading writing just like anything that helps you like get the frustration or get the anxiety out like I love anything and that related to that is there like a specific like story that you can recall in your journey with mental health that you would feel comfortable sharing like specifically where when you look back you're like oh it was because of mental health awareness and utilizing it to to get you know to 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 feel better about the the situation i could speak a little bit on a well something i'm very passionate about is or something also got me into wanting to work in psychology is my own struggles with mental health when it comes to like cultural competency and kind of how when i first reached out for help and for therapy i didn't know what I was doing at all and like the therapist that I got wasn't really aware of like the cultural like significance of mental health in Hispanic culture so I can talk a little bit about that and how that kind of like showed me about the importance of cultural competency yeah that also relates to mentoring because I can cross the two together I would say like the reason I wanted to start working in psychology and kind of like my biggest like I would say it's like an aha moment when it come when it came to like mental health and mental health awareness was when I first started um, receiving help for or when I first reached out for help. Um, I got put with a therapist who didn't understand the um, I guess like the relationship between mental health and like the Hispanic culture and they their, that cultural competence wasn't there. And I feel like that kind of set me on my journey when it comes to mentoring and when it comes to psychology. It's just that um, already black and brown youth face so many disparities in um, the educational system, in healthcare system, in a lot of our institutions. And um, now mental health um, care is one of those systems that is a disparity because of the lack of cultural competence and the lack of understanding of um, certain viewpoints where these youth are coming from and I think that was a big thing for me as a queer Hispanic woman I felt like I wasn't being truly seen um, in that um, in my relationship with my therapist so I had to learn how to advocate for myself and you know know that I had to get out of that relationship because it wasn't beneficial and already it was hard enough navigating um needing help and being in a situation where I can't handle things alone. Now, on top of that, I had to um, tell my therapist, like, hey, this isn't working out. Like, I need to find someone else to go to. And the person that helped me the most was my mentor in this situation. Um, I think that's the biggest importance of Black and Brown youth being in mentorship relationships is that they have that help that they need to navigate that you know, complicated outside world. And that's something that I hadn't had growing up. And 
that before previous to my mentoring relationship, I was not confident in speaking up for myself and I was not confident in, you know, even reaching out for help. It was not something that I wanted to do or felt like I had, you know, the courage to do. So, um, yeah, just I think it's very important for black and brown youth to be in these mentoring relationships because they have access to that help and also it's important for mentors to be um not necessarily similar background but just aware of the complexity of culture language race ethnicity gender identity in um and how it relates to the way society is now and the way youth are growing up it's very important to be understanding of those things so um yeah that kind of is the story of what set me on my journey with psychology and now I'm still interested in working with black and brown youth and um, making sure that I can help bridge the gap of those disparities so that mental health resources and therapy and whatever it is is more accessible and equitable amongst the Hispanic and the black community. That is awesome. You know, mentoring, that, that really speaks to the cycle of mentoring. Like you were mentored and you were able to receive resources and gaps that you didn't have, that you wouldn't have have, uh, you wouldn't have had otherwise. And now you're, you know, paying that forward by mentoring other people. And you spoke about like various identities and how um, you were navigating your identities in different spaces and how sometimes it was challenging for you. And I'm curious, speaking to your various identities, what are some resources? And when I say resources, I mean tangible resources, mental health resources that you think young people like yourself could benefit from? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so, okay, I'm going to try to speak on some specific to Durham, but also just more like kind of like social media or kind of just like organizations globally. So, you know, everyone can reach it, but, um, kind of specific to Durham, one, um, organization that kind of helped me and even helped me get matched with, the um, LGBTQ plus therapist was, um, the LGBTQ center of Durham. And um, they, you know, like, honestly, just amazing. Um, They helped me a lot with kind of um, connecting my spirituality and religion with my sexual identity. And also, like I said, um, finding a therapist who was LGBTQ plus identifying so that I felt more affirmed in um, that space. So they helped me. And then I would also say the Emily K Center, of course, is an amazing, tremendous help for um, black and brown um, youth in Durham who are on um, on a path to achieving higher education. Um, they helped me when it comes to my first generation identity. I had no clue what I was doing for college. Like I literally I didn't know what FAFSA was. I didn't know what Common App was like. I didn't know any of these things. But thanks to the Emily K Center, I had the resources I needed um, to know what these things are, be like ready to take on the Common App and the personal essays and the supplementals and scholarships. And I had that support. And of course, I found my mentor there. And um, more kind of like global initiatives I can think of are like um, more well-known organizations. the Trevor Project or the Trevor Foundation, they do amazing work with LGBTQ and trans identifying youth and um, finding resources for um, gender affirming care, but also just, um, you know, like validating the experiences, the lived experiences of these youth and advocating for policy that protects LGBTQ and trans identities. So, um, yeah, that's something to look into. Um, oh, more specific to Durham, El Futuro does a lot of amazing um, therapy with Hispanic um, um, Hispanic people. And I think that's like the importance of cultural competent care is that at El Futuro, you can find um, Hispanic therapists for um, the Hispanic community out there. <laughs> and um, oh, my goodness. Yeah, that those are like the re- main resources I can think of, but also 
I'm a big like advocate of community. Like community is my biggest resource. I think um, everywhere I go, I make a little community. And based on what I need help with, that community is what I go to. So, for example, with Youth Mentoring Collaborative, I think a lot of the leadership and social justice questions that I have or the initiatives that I want to take on, you guys are my little community. <laughs> and, yeah, it's am- that's amazing. Um, and then uh, when I think of, like, at my school, like, I have a little community of other, like, first-generation low-income students that can we can help support each other. And even in my church, um, having a more like progressive but spiritual community is also what has helped me grow a lot in my identities and feel secure so yeah just finding a little community everywhere you go and you got all the communities man yeah, I, I got all of them <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's great that's great so um i mean with this great interview i, I it's so is it, it's so fulfilling um i'm kind of sad that we're getting to the closing Mm-hmm. Of it. Um, but this part is like the future of mentoring. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I just wanna ask you, uh what do you see as the future of youth and young adult mentoring and how can organizations evolve to better meet the needs of young people? I think that is a very good question because um I see the future of mentoring changing completely as um, more organizations like Youth Mentoring Collaborative and other mentoring organizations focus on youth-centered mentoring. I think one big idea that comes up for me is doing group mentoring or even youth-on-youth mentoring. Um, I think that one big thing that I saw in the Social Justice Academy as a youth coach was that um, the participants felt so comfortable and like talked so much and like had so much passion when it was youth session, a youth led session. And I think that's something that's going to be big in the future of mentoring. I think a lot of youth can find comfort in each other. And sometimes like my friend has advice that I need to hear and I have advice that they need to hear. Like, it's like, I, I would consider that mentoring in itself. Like, you know, we're giving each other advice that otherwise we would not take. Like, sometimes we just need to hear. So I think that's a big thing. But also um, with group mentoring, I do think that youth find a lot of comfort being amongst people who are going through um, similar difficulties as they're going through or are in similar situations that they're in. So I think even having like um, a mentor and then several mentees in one, you know, mentorship relationship setting, like that's a big thing that I think is going to come up in the future of mentoring. And I think it's already um, slowly coming up with, um, yeah, with things. But um, group mentoring is like one of the big things that I do think there's a lot of benefit coming out of um, youth being around themselves and you know the ideas that young people can come up with when they're around like a supportive community like it's it's tremendous and um, that's something I'm excited to see another thing that I feel like is kind of like not something so prevalent right now but will come up is um, for example like I am a mentor to um to my cousin but she is older than me if that makes so like the the different ages of mentoring I think right now when you think of a mentor you think of someone who's older wiser but I think there is a lot of wisdom in you know um there's a lot of wisdom that youth have and um one thing that I recognize with my cousin and me is that um we both go to each other for advice and, you know, even though she's in her thirties now and, you know, she has a lot more like lived experience than me, we still have different experiences and my experiences can contribute to um, some things that she may need to hear. Um, So I think that's something that's going to come up too. It's just like the different um, letting go of like the stereotypical, like mentors older than me type of relationship. But, um, yeah, I kind of see that. Was there a second part of that question? I feel like I answered the first part. 
for. No, you definitely had like okay. <laughs> it all in one 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 swing of the bat. So I'm gonna pass it on to Santi. Yeah, that's great. And you were talking about uh, bi-directional impacts and mentoring relationships, right? Like you learn from your mm-hmm. mentor and your mentor learns from you. It doesn't really have to always be like mentee yeah. and mentor. It can be, you know, that bi- di- bi-directional relationship. And I like that. Yeah. And the words, I was, I was, I don't know. I was thinking, <laughs> I couldn't think of like the specific terminology, but you got bi-directional. Yeah. Yeah. I learned that in college. Um, And then also (laughs) um, being a product of informal um, near peer mentoring, I I agree with what you were saying. I think there needs to be more peer or near peer mentoring and in group settings. I mean, I think that our listeners can agree with this, just like hearing you speak. I mean, if we were on the phone, I wouldn't say that you're the age that you are, you know, like it's not about age. And with you being on track two, where we talk to experts, this is something that I mentioned in the intro where it's not about age. You, You are an expert regardless of your age. And that is through your lived experiences. Um, I love this. So next question being, um, what is one concrete action that listeners can take today to support youth mentoring in their communities? Mm, one concrete action. Um, so I'm, I know you said one, but I'm going to go into one that's going to fall into another and another. Um, one main thing I would say is listening to the youth in your community. Um, I think that by listening to them, you can recognize um, how important mentoring organizations are. And in that, you can, if possible, donate to mentoring organizations. That way they can expand and have the resources they need to um, have outreach for all youth. But also um, volunteer. Um, I think everyone has, you know, a fountain of knowledge that they can share with the world to volunteer to be a mentor or if you're in need of a mentor you can also find that through mentoring organizations but my biggest thing is just listen to the youth in your community and um, find out ways that um, you can support mentoring organizations through them so that's my biggest thing, but also donate because, you know, mentoring organizations don't get enough support as they should for the work that they're doing. So if possible, if you have the resources, um, that's a big thing. Um, but, yeah, just um, be attentive, listen to the youth, and, um, yeah. Yes, that's my one big thing. I agree with the donating. <laughs> dollars a month won't hurt you guys and girls out there. So, that's a little tidbit for me. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate that. I see. It's just it's just on point today. I mean, every day, but today <laughs> specifically. It's a message going on right now. Okay, so do you have any advice for someone who is interested in getting involved in mentoring young people? And this can be for mentors or mentees. So what advice for someone they're like, I think I want to do this mentoring thing or a mentee who's like, I think I want to mentor. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give? So for someone who's looking to get into being a mentor, um, I would say the biggest piece of advice I have for them specifically is, Well, actually, I think I'm going to have to reverse it first. So the biggest advice I have for mentees is um, recognizing that you don't know everything. I think the biggest thing is that um, we all need help in some way, and it's okay to need that help. So recognizing that you don't know every single fact of life and that there's someone who can help you navigate certain challenges is a big thing um, and be open to those relationships. So if you're looking to become or to get into a mentoring relationship and be a mentee, just know that everyone has um, an experience that they can share with you that will help you grow. 
And um, that's an important thing, but also knowing that it's okay to need help and it's okay, um, like I said earlier, to not be okay and to um, need the advice of someone else. Sometimes it's hard to see that and to accept it, but that's a big thing. For mentors, I want to flip it and kind of say the same thing. Know that you don't know everything, but be willing and open to learn. Um, I think that even as mentors, like, um, there's, there's always going to be a pressure of um, helping your mentor and I mean your mentee and everything that they're going through or like knowing every single little thing but um, it's mentoring is also a learning process so just being open and willing to learn and open and willing to um, challenge yourself in learning and having an open mind um, I think that's a big thing I think with my mentoring relationships I can think of my greatest mentors are people who are interested in learning about me and interested in um, having an open mind about the different things that I bring up. So, um, yeah, I think just being a good listener and being open and willing to um, explore new concepts that you may have not heard of or you may have not previously explored. Um, and, yeah, just be a listener, be an advocate for your mentee if they need it. And, um, yeah, that's my biggest thing. I think the beauty of mentoring and men, the mentor and mentee relationships is that, like you said, it's bi-directional. You both get something out of it. So, um, yeah, just recognizing that although it's like mentoring and mentee can be an official role and you, there's certain like expectations that come with that. Also knowing that, um, you know, it can be like a, like a friendship too. <laughs> Man, mm. it is bittersweet that, that this interview is ending. I mean, you've given a lot of helpful advice to our listeners. And the last question being, how can our listeners connect with you outside this space, you know? Um. Yeah, so, okay. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to give two ways to connect with me. One way would be um, probably through my Instagram. I do post... Um, occasionally a lot of things about mentoring on my Instagram I repost all of the YMC things so you can catch a lot of information on there but it's gonna be um j-u-l-i-s-s-a dot a-g-6 that's my Instagram feel free to dm me in need of any questions or if you want to know resources around Durham I'm very well versed in that considering I grew up here and now I have another four years here and then um, um, more kind of like professionally, I guess, or like um, more you can reach me through my email, my Duke email. So that's ja421 at duke.edu. Um, I usually check that email every single day. My Instagram, I don't check as often because I'm studious right now, guys. Very studious. So <laughs> probably email me. But I also did just want to leave um, a piece of, or I don't know if you guys have a section of leading a piece of advice, but we can edit this part out. I'm going to leave my piece of advice. Um, one thing that was recently told to me that I feel like we always need to hear every day in our lives is take up space. Um, honestly, like, as little and I feel like as often as we hear it, I always forget to take up space and I always forget that I'm worthy of taking up space and that my opinions and my expressions, like they're as valuable as anyone else in the room. So just take up that space. You belong wherever you are. There's a reason you're there. Um, and another thing that I learned through Youth Mentoring Collaborative from a speaker during Summer Social Justice is honor your agency you are an amazing human being. And, you know, if you're here listening to this podcast and there's a question that you have or something you're trying to learn. So if there's one thing you take out of it is honor your agency, listen to the young kids around you. If you are a young kid, be open and willing to explore and know that you belong in any space that you're in. And yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Now I have a question for you. Oh, okay. Start with this dude basketball game, man. I'm trying to make one of them. This one, I don't need. I don't. I don't want to be. I, look, I don't even want to go to a Tar Heel one, like because I already know that's hot. That's hot. Ooh. 
It's hot topic. I, look, I'm gracious when they playing like a little D2 school from like uh, Ohio somewhere. Like, I'm okay. I just want to be in the arena. That's our it. team this year? Our team? Oh, Santi, I'm so sorry, but our team this year? Like, oh, there's no, like, we have so many good players. So many good players. Like, we're going to be undefeated. I'm so sorry, Santi. Undefeated. Uh, undefeated. <laughs> Listen, I mean, undefeated. early in the season, so you can have, you know, that optimism, because I love that for you. <laughs> That's all it is, is optimism. What did I say about listening to your youth? <laughs> I'm going to send you some videos from Franklin Street so you can see. <laughs> I just want to be in there. You know, that's it. So. I'll get you in for this. Look, I, I talk to everyone on campus, all the all the bus drivers, all the staff, all the administrators. I'm 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 cool with everyone. You know, another person I'm cool with because of Emily K. He may not know me, but I know him. Is Coach K. He'll get us in. Okay. So oh yeah. He'll get us in. Hello, Coach K. Especially you know how to say it. Yeah, he experience. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he experience. <laughs> She know me. I know her. We know each other. <laughs> I'm dying. We want to hear from you. If you are interested in being on the YMC Me podcast, visit our website and email us at info at youthmentoringcollaborative.org. Whoa, whoa, be yourself, king. Be yourself. Be yourself, queen. Be yourself. Be yourself king, be yourself, be yourself queen, be yourself.